Hey everybody, welcome to the video. Welcome to the channel. We are back on the Timber Bridge project today. If you're new to the channel, we just recently purchased some property and halfway through this property, there's this small creek that kind of cuts the property in half and we can't get a side-by-side -side or our small compact tractor over to the other side to do trails and work and that kind of thing. So we're building a timber bridge for the tractor and the side-by-side -side to get across here. On the previous video, we put that log that you see there across there which now allows us to use it as a footbridge to work on either side of it fairly easily. Today, we're going to start stacking the stones and pouring some concrete for the footers for the timber bridge. First things first, we'll use our homemade water level. We're gonna go ahead and establish grade on each side and we're also gonna go ahead and cross measure and establish some pins so we have good square reference points of where these footers need to actually be. This line right here is the grade that we set on the other side of the ditch. I open this valve, this water is going to move up and down, and hopefully it levels out right here. If it doesn't, we just move downhill or uphill, depending on what this tells us, to find the same grade on this side. So it's settled out right there, which means we need to move downhill. As we move downhill, go ahead and drive a pin here. So we'll set grade to that. That'll work. That's fine. Set that there. See if you can see the water level just in there. Crack the valve open, let the air out. We're looking for the top of this tape. Not quite. Just gotta drive it down a little bit. All right, check. Water levels work great. I mean, they're, they're incredibly accurate. They're a little bit slower than a laser, but they definitely fit the budget of what we've got laying around. And is the budget for this project. Right on the tape, that looks great. So I got one pin, same grade on each side. A little bit shorter distance than what that log is. Now we need to square up a box because we need to put a pin on the other side and level across. We are exactly 22 feet. Just gotta do a little Pythagorean theorem, however you pronounce it, you know, the old A squared plus B squared equals C squared deal. And get a box squared up. Well, it's pretty easy to do the math on squaring something up like this. Use a calculator. I don't know if you can see this screen or not, but here we go. Let's just say that's A plus seven squared equals that. And then wherever the square root button is, there she is. 
Well, 23.08 will be our cross measurement for this box, for this rectangle. 23.08 inches. Since we know we're going seven feet wide, come over here, I'll find seven foot. And I'll just paint the radius of seven foot. Logs kind of in the way. Because I did a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I know that my cross measurement is 23.08, which is pretty close to 23 one inch. So I can bring this across to wherever it hits my, my radius, which is right about there. Now I need a hammer. I wish you guys could just like reach out of the screen and grab things for me sometimes. I think I left it on the other side. We'll just use this for now. Needs more cowbell. Found the pin. Oh, worry. 22 feet. That is 22 feet exactly. Now we'll double check to make sure this is seven foot exactly. Six foot, 11 and three quarter. Close enough for what we're going for. The seven foot to that pin. So now, so now if all our math and measuring is right, we should be able to cross those pins come up with the exact same measurement. Let's try it. So we're gonna be 23 to the center of the pin. Twenty-three two. So we're an inch out of square. Not bad for just kind of the first try though. When you're by yourself. So we just gotta tweak it just a little bit. If that's the long side, we need to shorten it up a bit. Since that corner to that corner is the long one, we need to shorten it. And to do that, we just slide this side this way. We are two inches long. But you got to remember, what you take out this way makes that measurement longer. So we're just going to go over about an inch. All right there. Honestly, I'm probably being pretty picky for this job, but and we'll hook this side and we'll head over to the other side and drive that stake at 22 feet. See that? 22 feet. And then we'll recross. And we should be right on the money. 23-1 on both pins on this side. I don't know if the glare is messing you up. Now, if you have two tape measures, you could normally do this in one go. Or if you have another person, that is also helpful. If you guys could just grab that for me. Thanks, appreciate it. Why do I keep losing this? I should have painted it. There we go.
Let's see if we have 23-1 on this pin. Good there. 23-1. So that means we have two pins on this side squared up to two pins on that side. We'll call that the approach if you want. That doesn't mean that little maple right there is going to have to go, but that's not too big of a deal. The next thing is get the elevation on both sides of that. Then we'll get the mattocks out and the shovel, and we'll start digging down, getting some rocks stacked up here. I don't know how I'm going to get the rocks up out of the creek yet, but we'll figure it out. So that pin and the top of this pin right here, those are now level across and I went ahead and dug this out in the process and that is level across there as well. I have no idea if this is going to work. Let's go fishing for rocks. Next you go try to tell me a pipe wrench isn't a hammer. You know, you just outside the box. We're gonna have to cut that out of the way. That's okay. Oh about put a hole.
couple days later, we're gonna move the water level bucket to the other side. We did raise this side a couple inches from the initial plan, that's okay. So we'll set the bucket over here. And now we'll get this side stacked up and match that elevation. We're gonna do the concrete on this side just a little bit differently too, by the way, and you'll see that later in the video. But also, today is the day that I posted the first half of this video and you guys have a few good questions. So let's go ahead and knock a couple questions out real quick. It's definitely the easiest way to answer those. So I just screenshot them and brought them on the iPad. I bring the iPad out in my camera bag because that's what I used to fly the drone with. And Tim says, looks pretty steep on the other side. Is it drivable? That is an awesome question. And the answer to that is this part right here, it is too steep, but this part is not. This is the trail we come down to get here. And one of the reasons we picked this particular spot to cross at, so we can come across there and then instead of going straight up the trail, See how the hill kind of starts to round right there? We can come off and then follow the hill around the edge like that. And that way we're not just rocketing straight up the other side. So that's one of the reasons we built it there is we can kind of cut a trail into the bank on the other side and keep it from being as steep. Next question, and this is a great one. And to answer it, we'll just go ahead and grab a piece of bark. We'll go down here and show you. So the reason we take the bark off, we're on the bottom side obviously, one, the insects hide between the bark and the tree. So you take the bark off, you eliminate that hiding spot, at least for a little bit. But the main reason, oh, I dropped my demonstration. The main reason, if you can imagine this piece of bark on the bottom side, the shape of it, it acts like a cup. And if there's any rainwater that comes down the side, it's gonna sit in that bark between the bark and the log, and it's going to accelerate the rotting process. So if you take the bark off, the rainwater comes down and just drips right off the bottom side. And with it exposed like that, any moisture that does get there from the rain or humidity or whatever, it now has the opportunity to air dry rather quickly versus trying to dry out between that void space of the bark. Oh gosh, here we go. And the log. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's get that other side leveled up, get some stone stacked and see if we can get the concrete in there too. Feel like we're getting pretty close on the other side. I'm gonna set grade with the water level on this side. See where we're at. So now we know right there at the bottom of that tape, that's what we're looking for on the other side or something close to it. Oh, I love the looks of what we're getting there. You know what, here, let me, 
Hold on. I want to show you guys the way this levels out. All right, so I set it low down on the creek so you can see. Now watch, you'll see the water level bounce up and down in here. We're wanting it to settle out right at about that line. I'm going to open the valve. You should see some water movement. See it right there? And then it bounces up to there. It's going to come back down. I gotta take this piece of tape off because it's somewhere in there and I need no Okay, where are you at? It's right there. See that? So it tells me I've got to be about just a little bit higher. Now we've already got this one over here. This is my guess is what the top course needs to be or top level needs to be. See the water level bouncing right there. So if my guess is right, we should settle out in there. That is pretty daggone good. Pretty close for a guess, I'll tell you that. It's within a quarter inch, and we can feather that out with the concrete. What that means is we need to get this height the rest of the way around, and then we can start throwing concrete in there. had a concrete mixer this whole time? Yeah, I did. Yes, I did. Here's the thing. I didn't think that first hole would take a little bit more than six, maybe seven. Let's get crazy and call it eight bags and we'll just hand mix it in the hole and be done with it. And I was wrong is the word that I think a lot of people might use. Anyway, we're going to use the old concrete mixer this time and just bucket it over there in the Ranger. It'll take a little bit longer drive time, but I'd rather have more time driving than mixing mud in the hole, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I'm not going to have enough of this free sacrete that I have. I'll explain the free part in just a minute. I'm not going to have enough for this, of this free sacrete I have to fill the whole thing. So we're going to have to start laying some rocks on the back side as well. I think we're going to be a little short on concrete. I think it'll be okay though, and I'll explain why. Here is where we were at on this end. You see we had both T-posts in. We did that on that side as well. Basically that is to keep it from sliding off the hill. That's all it is. It's nothing fancy. It's just to help get a little bit extra bite on the hillside. I did have some extra number four bar at the YouTube Yacht Build site. So I threw a horizontal piece of number four bar in down there. Then I threw a couple pieces of number four bar in right there. Because obviously we're going to have a cold joint there when we get some more sacrete. I'd mentioned the sacrete is free. I actually had a buddy 
I'm not sure I understand the circumstances 100%. I just know he had a bunch of sacri in a storage unit that he needed to get rid of. So he gave me a call and asked if I had any projects going on that I could use some sacri. And I said, yeah, actually I do. Gave him some gas and some cold snacks and uh, he delivered them to the house actually. So he can't beat that. So aside from the gas and cold snacks, it's pretty much free. And he said he's got about 20 more bags. And if I want them, give him a holler and he'll get them out to me. So that should be about right. I think 20 bags will get us there. I'm gonna get some drone shots of this real quick and then we're gonna head over. Something came in the other day. I'm super excited about it and it kind of steers the direction of the channel. So we'll go over there and give you an update on that and we'll get this thing wrapped up. stone for the backfill on the YouTube yacht is officially here. We got 40 tons. This is number sevens. That's what we we'll use for backfill on the backside of the YouTube yacht. 40 tons of it. They brought it in a triaxle back our little chert road. And we're going to use the little 755 compact tractor. Drive right down this little bench we made with the Caterpillar D4 dozer. We rented that from Dirt Perfect. And we're going to work our way around the back side, getting that all backfilled with stone. And I cannot wait. The waterproofing is actually over at the house as well. So we've got the waterproofing, we've got the stone, and I've got one work day for Dirt Perfect coming up. And then we'll have the time and we can start getting this thing back, backfilled. That was tough. And I cannot wait. We have been, I don't know what it is about backfilling behind a wall, but it just feels like such a big step. You're finally starting to come up out of the ground and I'm definitely excited about it. Another little channel update while we're talking about it. I was talking to Mike the other day and he thinks that the one of the 850s will be available towards the end of July to get up here and work on the pond. So hopefully at the end of July, we'll be doing some big work, some big pushing on the pond project and get it repaired, wrapped up and ready. I'm pretty excited about that. I really am. And I'm excited about the way that little bridge is turning out. I know there are a lot of people who will say that's too much work for what it is. But listen, there's a guy by the name of Aaron Fields. And if you're in the fire service, you, you're probably familiar with who he is. But he has this saying, and it's work is the shortcut. And I love it. I heard that once and I latched onto it. And in this case, the work literally is the shortcut to get to the other side of the property. So I have no problem with the amount of work it's taken. I'm loving every minute of it. I hope you guys are enjoying the content. I hope you're enjoying the channel. Hope you're enjoying your day. I hope you enjoy whatever you're doing in between now and working on this thing, because it's getting exciting. Oh, it is getting exciting as always. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Still haven't fixed the shift cable though. I pulled up too close. I gotta... I think I can make that turn. Okay, I've got to get that thing ordered. Oh yeah, there we go.